The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, welcome to this Advice Cloud Boost Your Public Sector Bidding Strategy. Delighted to welcome you to this this afternoon. My name is Chris Farthing. I'm the founder of Advice Cloud and also a public sector buyer. So for my sins, please don't hold that against me. And uh, so you know, it's me and my teams that you'll be coming up against when uh, we're issuing those delightful um, pens and bids for you to go against. So I thought I'd give you a few top tips um, and some advice and guidance on how you can actually hopefully boost your, uh, your bidding strategy and also hopefully win some more business. So um, what I'll do first of all, though, just to uh, set the agenda, in fact, before we go into the, um, the agenda and stuff, a bit of housekeeping. So this is being recorded. Uh, we have a half an hour here with us today, so it's quite a short webinar. We're going to keep these tightly focused. It's on a new format. Um, you are all muted, okay? So please use, and got questions, things like that, please do use the um, question in the sidebar to ask. The chat can get a bit overlooked, but in the question stuff, definitely will be there in the recording. So any questions that are unanswered, we can then answer later on. Um, there will be um, Q and A at the end, <clears throat> where you'll be able to we'll be able to go through these. I'm AV assisted by, um, as always, by my marketing lead Danny, um, who will be running a number of polls throughout this, um, just so we can gauge the temperature of the room, but also be helping with the questioning and um, slides, recording, and the Q and A all uh, responded to will be issued hopefully by tomorrow afternoon. So that's that out of the way. Um, and also, you know what? It's nice to be able to do and talk about something different other than frameworks. It seems I've been talking about frameworks a lot this year. Um, but yeah, nice to be talking about something else. Okay, so quick intro to us who've not been there before. Who are Advice Cloud? Well, we consider ourselves GovTech viability mentors. We're the world's only ones of those. Uh, we are public sector procurement experts. We specialize a lot in working from G Cloud and DOS, but huge amount of other frameworks as well. We only focus on tech and digital and we only work within the UK public sector. So we're very, very tightly focused. Don't do facilities, cleaning, um, construction, or anything else like that, okay? Recruitment. Um, we work on both sides with suppliers and with buyers, helping them buy and sell cloud and digital services. Um, we're founded in 2014, so it's our 10th year of trading, which we're delighted to be here. Um, and some stats, you know, from the supply side, we've been able to help um, over 500 organizations earn one and a half billion as a cumulative business one by our clients across all the frameworks we work across. Uh, and not really, really, we're very passionate about working with SMEs. So 71% of our clients are, are SMEs, and a lot of those have gone on to, be, uh, to do extremely well on the basis and on the back of our advice. And, that, and that, that money there is all on the back of our advice. So what we cover today, so first of all, a bit of background about what does public sector bidding entail, um, how to craft a bidding strategy, uh, it's not just, um, oh, here's a tender, let's respond to it. There's a bit of work you should be doing around this. Um, some top tips for better bids, a little bit about how we can help. We are a paid for consultancy after all. And then we're headed to Q&A and we'll close up. Okay. So first of all, Danny, if you'd like to do the, the, our first of our polls, as I said, this helps us gauge the temperature of the room and, and maybe change some of the content on the fly. So can we have that one first one up, please? So first of all, have you won any public sector bids in the past two years? Please select one of the following. Yes, we've won a few. Yes, just the one. No, we've not won any, and we haven't even tried to bid yet. Okay, you're up to about 85%. Remember, advice car people, if you're on here, please don't vote. Okay, kind of the numbers a bit. Okay, I think we're pretty much there. So it looks like we're almost up to 90% voted, Danny. So let's close that and we'll um, produce some results there, please, if you don't mind. Okay, so an outstanding number of you, 70% have won a few, which is fantastic. Congratulations. And 5% of you have won just the one. Um, just under a third, or just under a quarter, haven't won any. And um, some, a small number of you, again, haven't even bid yet. So hopefully for that, um 40 33 percent of you there this will help you then and also then for 68 percent should help you again with, um, with that. so you close that down and then we'll crack on as well again so thank you very much for that so what does public sector bidding entail okay so sometimes it might seem a bit commonsensical but there are de there are definitely many different ways to win public sector contracts okay um however Bidding on a presented opportunity is one of the most common ways. It's it's one of the ways it seems to be out there that you know under the fairness and equal treatment under the regulations that we have, 
um, where you know people will so public sector buyers will issue um, an opportunity, and you have then have the opportunity to respond to that. Uh, and it's most commonly in the form of what's called an invitation to tender or ITT. We do love a three-letter acronym within public within public procurement. So, but you can also um, look at various different RFs. What we call it RFX, so it could be RFPs, our request for pricing, request for information, request for quoting. You'll have all these different sort of things, but mostly of you, you've seen it issued, seen through um, procurement frameworks or dynamic purchasing systems. And this is what's called a further competition. So we're hopefully just trying to give you a bit of jargon here to help you understand the process. All right. Now, often, but not always, in fact, it's probably less often, um, a lot of opportunities are published on Finder Tender or Contracts Finder, which is publicly available information published by the by the UK government. Okay, these are websites open there. There are also a myriad of tender uh, finder portals, most of which don't really have much value, to be honest. They're just regurgitating information. Um, so, you know, I'm not a big fan of the tender portals. There are some, there are some that add a lot, a lot more value there, and we tend to work with those as partners, okay? Um, so this is an opportunity to show how you as a supplier can meet those customer needs. It's off, you'll see um, an ITT pack um, will, with documents will be issued out, which will state what the, what the, what the, um, the focus of the tender is about, what the services we want to buy, the terms and conditions, um, any details about how we're going to evaluate a timeline and what we're expecting, either from a qualification perspective, or um, if it's um, a, if it's specifically an open tender to be an off qualification, and also um, a look at the services you're offering. There's, there's a, a bunch of different routes, and they're all going to be streamlined as well in the public procurement um, regulations that are coming in in October. Okay, so. What does public sector bidding entail? So first and foremost, we're finding now that social value is becoming an enormous part of evaluating bids. Yeah, we've seen people win and lose um, bids on on social value. Not our clients, of course, have people come to us and say that they've lost um, bids on social value, that they've done well, and they've, they've scored the highest on, techn on their technical or quality responses, that they've done well on pricing, but the, the minimum 10% that is actually mandated by certainly by central government for um, for um, for public sector buyers to put in their tenders now um, is based on social value. Okay, so you know it's it's absolutely critical. There's a business partner of ours that state that you know getting a social value right in terms of your overall strategy framework and then being able to put that into your tender and your bidding is like having a 10 meter head start in a 100 meter sprint, which is a really good way of putting it, I think. Um, just out of just out of interest, from the social value model, there are two. There's a social value model and there's what's called the TOMS model, okay, to, to assess um, social value. In the social value model, the COVID section of the criteria is now being removed from that. So there are six, I think, um, key areas of, so they're down to five. Anyway, we're also seeing now, part as part of the public procurement regulations, the move to evaluating under what's called most advan most advantageous tender, rather than the meat procedure, uh, procedure um, approach, which is the most economically advantageous tender, which tended to vote. So if you think about how a tender structured, okay, you have um, a qualitative section, so it says how you're going to respond to um, the provisions of the service you're going to do, and then you've got your social value piece, and then you've got a pricing, yeah, you know, and so how much your service is going to cost, yeah. You know. um, and meat is was very much being used to focus on um, the, the scoring the, the 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 lowest cost tender things. And now moving to most advantageous tender, it's not formally in 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 legal um, parlance yet of how that's going to happen. But it just doesn't mean that the public ever have to pick the cheapest and things like social value and, and having innovation that can be taken into consideration a lot more. So there's just a lot more to bidding, though, every time something that's relevant comes up uh, and you do need to build a bidding strategy. And I had a call this morning, actually, with a small organisation. I'm actually doing work within a, a nice part of the public sector within the Royal Air Force. Uh, and they were having some challenges with bidding, and he said to me, you know, what can we do to improve on this? Uh, my problem was to stop bidding. Okay, now someone who sells bidding services and framework services, that may seem a bit weird, but it's very, very clear that they were looking to bid blindly rather than build relationships. 
Okay, and we'll come up a little bit more about that. The first thing anyone should always do in terms of strategy is about relationships. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk to a little bit more about with bidding strategy here. So how to craft a bidding strategy. So as I said, in our experience, bidding going blimey every time doesn't work. People do get bluebirds, and especially if you've got quite a niche solution. Um, but we do recommend that suppliers take their time um, to craft an actual plan for moving forward. And this doesn't mean starting at the beginning. So we split this into three phases, which is pre-bid procurement, uh, procurement or bid, and then post-bid, okay? So in terms of what, what we call buyability, okay, start with looking at your company and looking externally, like gather insights from your current customers, you know, what the big wins for them, what's gone well with delivery, how are the timings of projects, um, look at your competitors, see how you differentiate yourself against them. Um, ensuring that you have the right social value policies and procedures in place, including how you measure, which is ideally a mix of qualitative, as in the quality of the sort of stuff you're going to be doing, and quantitative. Um, you'll tend to find that the TOMS model comes in towards the quantitative, and the quantitative means how much is this going? What is the actual pound shilling and pence of value? All right, whereas the qualitative process, we tend to find includes more for the, um, the social value model, which is used most extensively by social government, central government. Um, do you think about big qualification? Do you have a bid no bid decision tool? Can you actually is how do you manage that whole bid stuff? Is this the right thing for you? Yeah. What is what outline of what makes an opportunity right for you, and then try and share it within your organisation so that you're not getting last minute, you know, three days before a tender's due in. Someone going, oh, this is ideal for us, and like if it comes three days before, then it's certainly it's a no bid from us. You know, for me, you haven't got the time to put your best fit forward. It's about using your resources effectively. Okay, so in terms of the bidding stage, you know, think about how you manage the bidding process. Who manages it? Who's the lead for that? Who's involved? How are you going to get them out of their day jobs, especially if you're a small firm, to allow them enough time to think about the solution that's being offered, that you're offering and try to um, and try to make sure that you can spend a good enough time to respond to that as well. What are your deadlines and timing? Start from the apart from the submission date. Take it the day before. Never ever submit anything on the last day. I have seen so on the other side. I've so many suppliers call me up and say, oh, "Our network failed," and so I'm sorry, your bid just can't. We can't accept it. I mean, in the old days, I mean, I used to have um, people uh, coming in, and you know, they'd be hand delivering bids at like five to twelve to the reception desk, so they had their stamp. You know, looking very very sweaty and harassed. Um, but we don't do that anymore because it's all down to electronics. We don't, I can't remember the last time I accepted a paper bid, but you get the thing, okay? Um, who does the bid writing and how? Now, this could be quite contentious, okay? But be quite wary of gener generative um, AI tools for final submissions. And also have a look, um, there's some recent um, guidance being issued um, from central government, from CAB office, around the use of AI in bidding. So, and we've put the link here that the Reference here for PPN 024. It does need to be personalised. As a buyer, I've been on the other side of this. Okay, when people have just submitted stuff, and I've actually got identical responses. We've seen it in recruitment. We've seen, you know, when we're hiring people, and we've seen it in tender responses. Okay, you need to have personalised. It needs to be about your solution because what, if you're submitting something that's just done by Gen, Gen AI, yeah, you know, that isn't tailored and personalised to your own organisation. It's not actually your stuff, so it can be discounted. All right. Plan your content out, storyboard what you're looking to do. How many reviews do you do of your bids before submission? And a little note down the bottom, don't use the same team for your final reviews. Okay. Get another external team to go through making sure you're answering the question. You know, public sector bidding is has to be seen as an exam. All right. So the amount of times we spend talking to people when we're guiding them through the bid process about are making sure you answer the question. Sorry, I didn't make sure my time is here. Uh, making sure you're answering the question. Yeah, you know? and bid blindness is a thing. Okay, so if you're getting the same team looking at the answers you just spent two weeks working on, they're not going to see the mistakes and errors. You know? How is the bid presented? It's not always stale written responses. Do you have experience with proposals and presentations? This is coming towards the more end of things. So you know, there's often three or four stages here. We've got interviews, presentations, customer customer visits, things like that. And finally, who signs it off? What's the QA process here? Is that quality assurance process? Do you need to add to your timeline, taking away more or less time for writing because you've got a governance board that needs to sign off commercial offers? Think about all of that and making sure you've got everybody aligned. Okay. And finally, post bid. Okay. 
A perfect business strategy is all about continuous improvement. You know, it's asking for client feedback, knowing where you went wrong and what went well. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's good that's put into things. And you, know, you may not win it, but you might get some really high scores. And that understanding where it went well and then identifying what needs to be improved on can really help you on the next one that's coming on. How are the bits evaluated? You know, make sure you action the feedback that you get. And if you don't get it, be, be, be persistent, but friendly about asking for, for bid feedback, okay? Try to have a retrospective internally about what happened, even if you were successful, because there's going to be ways that you can improve, all right? And we do an awful lot of this, especially at the end of every um, major bid that we put in now. We get our consultants to spend time to feedback to our clients as to what they, where we think they can improve on and what we identify with some, with some general challenges. And we've gone on with certain clients to continually win business now. And we're getting on such a really good win rate with, with quite a large number of them. Now, out of this also, when you're getting the feedback, means you can create a content library, which, which you know, which quite often a lot of the Gen AI stuff really is. Um, and you're pulling together your successful bids and putting the examples of what went well together. Don't just put it in an email folder and leave it there, going, oh, I've got to go and hunt for that. Try to graft it and put it together. So a quick poll here, please, Dan, if you don't mind. Just on that. I hope that little bit's been quite helpful so far. So do you have a public set of bid strategy in place? Please select one of the following. Yes, we have a detailed approach to the market. Yes, we need a bit of work. No, we just bid when we can. And uh, no, we don't even know where to start. Everyone's a beginner here. You know, the people who win, as my, as my gym instructor would say, everyone started huffing and puffing and not being able to do a press up, which at the moment still is me because I broke my left ACL skiing last week. But there we are. Hence, I'm hopping about a bit. Let's see how you're getting on. Got 90% voted. So, yeah, I think we can close that down and publish the results there, please, Danny. So, 20% of you have a detailed approach to market. Congratulations. Half of you say, yep, yeah, it needs a bit of work. And, you know, 35%, 34% of you did when you can or don't know where to start. Well, you know, that's actually quite a reasonable spread. And thank you for being honest and open with that as well. Um, hopefully, the next bits in there will be able to help you out. That will close that down now. Thanks very much. Okay, well, let's crack on. So some top tips, how can you be more viable, which is our word for being able to, you know, some removing the blockers from procurement saying no, which often happens, to be honest. So what can you do to boost your viability? All right, we've seen a fair share of amazing bids as well as quite a few bad ones. So I think we need to change that to less than good ones, we say, or ones that need help. So here's what we think we could be doing. So first of all, this is the most important, get upstreaming conversations by the big release. Yeah. I very rarely know people who win big blinds. Um, you know, there's, there's, I know people who do it and say, yeah, we're great at it. But ultimately, you know, most of the bids that we see go out are just someone who's known. It's not always going to an incumbent, but certainly someone who's been able to have some upstream conversations. Okay, Make sure you get your accreditations in order before you bid. So you know that, you, that if you're bidding in healthcare, that you're answering all of the right ISOs and the accreditations that you need to get there, for example, or if you're in a more secure environment, don't go in blind, use a scattergun scatter approach, qualify hard, the more effort you put into qualifying out or understanding what really works for you will mean you'll, you'll submit better quality bids overall. Ensure you're carrying a continued social value development. I spoke about that already. Build a solid public for sales and marketing strategy too as well. This bidding should also be part of that whole sales and marketing strategy and it shouldn't be the sales and marketing strategy. We're just going to respond to tenders. Okay. After, I, you know, I have this conversation with some quite experienced people and we're still saying, you know, you need to get out and make build those relationships. Ensure you're asking for feedback from the buyer. We've covered that a bit. Maybe look into AO tools to help. You still need to be good at writing bids, okay? And you still need to be good at being able to explain how your stuff differentiates from other people, all right? And also be good at answering the questions. You know, I, I, I see too much of this stuff um, at the moment. And, you know, the tool, there is good tooling out there. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's definitely first rung type stuff still all right and ideally don't please copy your your, your successful bids across to other opportunities adapt them responses should be bespoke and because can tell a lot of time especially when um you know you put the rug you leave the old name in in the bid you don't do your, your control f and replace your um your 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 opportunity names and things like that it's it happens more times than i care to mention to one so that's that bit there from the top tip. So let's talk about how we can help in terms of boosting your viability, making you more viable to the public.
public sector. So we split these, as I said, into three phases, okay? And these three phases are pre-bid, pre -bid, bid and post-bid. We have a bunch of services on there. So capture planning and advice, that whole bit about the upfront work, about what it needs, to, what you need to do to be successful and to respond to a tender when you know something's coming down the line, there's a bunch of things you can do. There's social value development, bid qualification guidance, into the bid side of things so we can help run the process, help with bid writing. We don't actually, we can provide bid writers, but we try not to, uh, but certainly around the content, the planning, the storyboarding and the editing, um, social value response drafting. We can do some reviews of your, your bid going through. Red team reviews is a big part of what we do. Following on that, presentation, coaching and advice, we have a bunch of really great um, ex-government chief officers, very senior people who will do dem demi dummy runs, demi dummy runs, and, and a lot of our team will help do those as well. And then finally, we can help with your bid submission and sign-off stuff as well. Afterwards, you know, in terms of continuous improvement, advice and support, doing retros, access and client feedback, helping you phrase the words to actually ask the right questions to get decent feedback out. In terms of knowledge management, helping build a content library, and underneath all of that, there's training workshops in terms of also effective proposal writing, capture planning sessions, and definitely stuff around um, how to review and present better. Okay. All of this now, we've moved this into a new methodology. We've moved much more into our expert-led model that we use for a lot of our clients. We call this our buyability boost. And we've got three models here, but this is one all about bidding and talking here, okay? And boost stands for baseline, outline, operate, succeed, and thrive. Where first of all, we will always try with a baseline discovery session to find out where your blockers are and what you're doing well. Then we can outline and operate, which helps you give you a timely, clear action plan, excuse me, with achievable targets and goals. We operate, we deliver the service to identify to increase your viability and then move you into success and thrive. It's where you're winning more work, you're getting better bids in there, and you're getting using us, using us ideally less and less just for the really horrible um, or the really difficult stuff, which is where we like to work. So a quick quote, quote, quote here from a company that recently did some work for some modular data. I won't read it out, but one of our um, senior senior advisors, Sarah, did a load of work for them, and there's been an absolutely fantastic feedback for them. So that's that there. We also have developed our own tool to help you find out the potential blockers in your work that you're doing with the public sector. It's unique to us. It's our, it's our own stuff, and we put a lot of work into this. So. Please do, if you haven't completed this already, do feel free to um, complete this. It, it breaks down your overscore interaction with sections, letting you know what steps you need to take. Um, and plus, it really does take a couple of minutes, but it gives you really good feedback on where to go to. And then, of course, you can like, have a chat with us afterwards. So if you want to book your biobility check-in and find out your biobility score, look here. There's that there. We've got um, the QR code there, or, or you can click here. The stuff will be sent to you anyway afterwards. So I think that's pretty much it. I'll uh, we'll do a quick poll again, and then we'll head into QA. So just a quick temperature check on how you found the session. Please let us know whether you found it very useful, useful, or not useful at all. Uh, up to nearly 85% of you have voted. I think we've got about 100 or so people registered, about 150 people registered for this, uh, for this. So it's a, a really good, um, uh, very, very useful um, way of feeding back to us as to what you've done. And if you have marked anything that you're not, please do feedback to us now. So uh, we're up to 85% of people have voted now, Then I think we'll close that down. Progress that. Okay, so 96% of you found it either very useful or useful, and 4% of you not useful at all. Sorry to hear that. Please do let us know how we could have improved this or uh, to maybe help make your expectations. Um, but, you know, thanks ever so much to the 96% uh, of you who did find it useful or very useful. Thanks ever so much. And again, any feedback you've got from us about how we can improve would always be welcome. So um, with that, let's close that down, and I think we will head into Q&A. We have indeed, and um, we have... Six minutes left. I'm a minute early. Brilliant. Um, yeah, as Chris said, if you've got any questions, do just chuck them into the questions box um, on here. If you've got any questions about any of what Chris has spoken about. Um, we've got one here um, where we we're talking about how um, you should be sharing the reviews and, and avoiding uh, bid blindness. Um, who would you say should be involved 
in um, re reviewing the bits? Is there specific teams that should be involved or? Well, I think anybody who, who has some knowledge about the company and um, the approach and how they want to be perceived. So it could be um, definitely a senior bid manager or depending on the sort of size of organization you've got or a commercial, a commercial director, commercial officer, um, someone who has experience ideally um, of public sector procurement and who has experience of how of, of bidding and can go through to, first of all, just to check that you have actually answered the question, that you've hit your page limit, um, your word counts or whatever. Um, you know, it's just that mostly it's, it's, it's someone here there who has a definite interest um, in the the, the the sales process and the bidding process. So it's really up to you where, and your size of your organisation. There's no, no one size fit all, fits all answer here for that one, I'm afraid. Yes. Um, someone has popped in the questions box. Is the viability score that we provide just for G Cloud listings or is it more than that? Oh, no, no. That's, I don't think it really touches G Cloud listings, to be honest. It's all about um, the various things that you do that we found that are blockers within selling to the public sector. So it covers a bunch of different things as to public sector procurement knowledge, um, social value, uh, whether you're on frameworks or not, what frameworks you're on, yeah, what your bids, how you win bids and things like that. So it's, it's a whole thing about your approach. I think it's about ten, eight to 10 questions that are on there that gives you, gives our, um, we've got some stuff that we put behind it to give some advice with you, some, you know, some very, very long term. I think as an organization, we've got over 150 um, years jointly of public sector procurement advice here that's going into these to help you understand exactly where you where you're currently standing and it gives you an idea of where you can improve to as well so it's, it's definitely not framework related is the short answer okay and uh, we got another one coming that they ask um what are the most common reasons that make a solution or company as being not viable to the public sector um most common reasons first of all i think are one it's not not being on a framework for a start and not understanding how um how the public sector works and operates how their target markets work because you know it's a 20 billion a year market of which hugely different um, and varied um requirements and needs so you know emergency's revenue and customs are very different to um the high department of health or to the nhs schools are not the same as justice and prisons although personally coming from where i did it's felt very very similar um you know not that i have too long experience of prison by the way um so uh you know there's this there's, there's understanding of making sure you tailor your services and your offering and your value proposition to the relevant markets you're looking to attract but you know removing the blockers um such as uh, get making sure you've got the right level of accreditations and frameworks in place does go a long way Nice. Um, someone has asked, um, could we give a bit more detail on social value and what is covered in that? Um, we probably don't have enough time to go through it right now, um, but that might be something we do a future webinar on um, as well. But there are lots of resources on our Knowledge Hub in our website, um, so do check that out. Um, you can search on there for social value and that sort of thing and find lots of resources on there that can help and that are all free. Yeah. Um, Definitely, there's, yeah, there's uh, webinars we've done on social value on there as well. So um, that's just yes, too long a conversation. Or we'll book a chat with us and we'll see if we can talk to you about a bit more about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, um, someone asks, um, when we talk about the three different areas, pre-bid, um, bidding and post-bid, is it something that a company should be aiming to hit all three areas and doing everything in those three sections? And how would a smaller size company achieve this? Um, I think it's always, it's, it's a good thing to aim for. Yeah, you've got to pick what you can do. I mean, you know, you, you do actually have to get out there and make money still. So, um, you know, there, there's a bunch of different things in there that you, you, you do need to know. Yeah, that you should be doing so I, I would strongly focus and like i said that conversation this morning someone telling me how do i bid better and my my thing was just to stop bidding you know you want to win more business get out start getting out there and building your relationships which comes down to the capture planning side of things so you know focus very much making sure that you've got a lot of the pre-bid stuff sort of before you're coming to do the bidding work yeah again um it's that's quite an open-ended conversation to have so i'd be more than happy to have a chat with someone afterwards the person who asked that question 
especially about organized, small organizations. You know, 75% of our clients are small businesses and they're winning work. So we can definitely help. Which I think <laughs> brings us to time. Yep, definitely. Okay, so um, very, very grateful for you. Thank you so much everybody for attending for, for the questions asked. Um, as I said, we'll get the recording and the slides and the Q&A all sorted for hopefully for tomorrow, potentially this afternoon, more likely tomorrow. But yeah, please do get in touch. Thanks again and hopefully um, happy bidding and good luck with everything. Thanks so much and thanks as well, Danny, for everything as well. Cheers. Bye for now.